Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Peters, and this is Carrie. Um, thank you for joining us on our first live stream community presentation. Um, this is a new one for both of us, uh, but we definitely appreciate you joining us um, about learning about natural childbirth through osteopathic care. This is actually kind of a hybrid of two topics. So many people um, have the question for me, what is a DO? So that's kind of what the initial um, portion of the presentation is. And then um, the middle part is about natural childbirth. And then the end is kind of combining the two. So do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, natural childbirth is a great option for a low-risk mom um, who is looking to enjoy the natural elements of the physiological natural elements and the psychological and emotional ones as well. Um, Hypnobabies is a great way to really enjoy your childbirth experience. So I'm excited to talk about it. All right, so we'll go into the slides here. So first of all, just who I am. I'm a wife of one. Uh, my husband laughed at that, but I said, you, sometimes you have to specify these days. Um, and a mom of three, so you see my three babies there. Uh, first one is my oldest. I had a scheduled cesarean, and the next one was um, my VBAC with an epidural, and then my last one was my VBAC using hypnobabies. Um, I was born in Illinois, so if you notice an accent, that's where I'm from. I went to University of Illinois for undergrad, Chicago College of osteopathic medicine for my medical school and then uh, my residency was through the Michigan State University statewide campus system. I am board certified in obstetrics and gynecology and as I said I'm a hypnobabies graduate. I am also a hypno mom but I'm a mom of two. Um, I have an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old, and I've been teaching hypno babies for over seven years now. Um, I'm also a hypno doula, um, working with moms for almost 10 years um, as a hypno doula, and it's been a really wonderful, amazing experience to be able to witness women becoming mothers and babies being born, um, really helping uh, other women have empowering birth experiences like I had. Um, I became a hypnotherapist about three years ago because I realized that um, beyond childbirth, hypnosis can have a really wonderful um, healing effect on all other areas of life. And um, women need more than just a reframe of childbirth in their lives for a more fulfilling motherhood journey. Um, and last year I became a certified um, conscious parenting coach practitioner um, to continue furthering working with my hypno moms and others in my community to help them along their parenting journey as well. All right, so like I said, over this uh, talk, we'll go over what osteopathic medicine is. So doctors who practice osteopathic medicine have the letters DO instead of MD. Um, natural childbirth, it's important to know that your body is built for this, you can do it. And then hypnobirthing with a DO, integrated care for moms and babies with the main goal of having health. So what is osteopathic medicine? Um, it was created in 1874 by A.T. Still, who was actually an MD. He got fed up with the, the allopathic or MD system and um, looked into other ways to facilitate health. Um, so many people at that time, when they went in to seek medical care, they actually ended up worse off. So he wanted to see how can we facilitate health and promote health rather than um, having people have these poor outcomes. So there are different um, tenants that are the foundations for osteopathic medicine. We have our own oath, it's not the Hippocratic oath. You can see we have our own symbol, it's not the caduceus. And then um, many people will associate DOs or osteopathic medicine with OMT or osteopathic manipulative therapy. Um, so we'll go into that a little bit. Um, DOs do have full practicing rights in the U.S. All DOs in the U.S. are trained in the U.S. at medical schools um, and board certification is available just like for MDs. Um, DOs are rapidly growing out of the U.S. medical schools. One in four students right now is a DO. So if you've never seen one, it's very possible that you will see one in the future. Um, so these are the tenets of osteopathic medicine. 
Um, the body is a unit, person is a unit of mind, body, and spirit. So I think that's huge, very, very important to not just look for disease, but also to evaluate what a person's background is, what their social situation is, what their belief system is, to incorporate all of those things in order to uh, really facilitate their health and to promote wellness. Um, so body is capable of self-regulation, self-healing, and health maintenance. So this also goes into pregnancy and childbirth. If you recognize that your body is capable of doing this, that it's built for this, its structure is for this, then you have the confidence to go ahead and go along with it and not be afraid. So structure and function are related. So um, if you have proper structure, then your body will function better. If your body's not functioning well, then you can also have those ailments or pains in some joints and other areas. Um, so treatment is based on an understanding of these principles and understanding how those functions are related. So uh, the oath, these are just some key points from the oath. Um, you know, first and foremost, of course, preserve health and life of the patient. Um, and then always keeping in mind that basic thought of nature's laws, the body's inherent ability to recover itself. And then if we work um, in accord with colleagues, so um, definitely MDs and DOs work side by side very well. All of my colleagues in my practice are actually MDs other than my certified nurse midwives and nurse practitioners. So we work very well together um, and just always want to further the application of the basic biologic truths. So this is a demonstration of OMT um, or osteopathic manipulative therapy. So I um, would just like you to know that uh, recently the DO and MD residencies did combine under the one ACGME system. So in the past, especially earlier in my career, a lot of people would come to me assuming um, that all DOs do OMT. Um, I would say in the future that may become less and less common actually as people subspecialize um, and their residencies are now combined. So if you're looking for a practitioner who does OMT, you may have to seek that out as a subspecialty. I do uh, a bit of OMT in my office, but unfortunately um, time is not always <laughs> available to do it, but I do like to go over different techniques and try to teach patients things that they can do on their own. It's especially when we were able to have um, a support person available at appointments, then I could help instruct the support person how to do these techniques at home to um, aid in the comforts of uh, releasing some of the tension that can occur during pregnancy. So this is a demonstration of a procedure that could be done on a pregnant woman for very common aches is a sideline technique for psoas problem. And this is a muscle energy technique to stretch a tight psoas muscle. And in this technique, it's very useful for a patient who is either pregnant or cannot tolerate lying on their stomach. So what I prefer to do with this is have them situated so that their shoulders are square to the table and their pelvis is square to the table. Then what we'll do is we'll place one hand up here on the hip and you're going to cradle this top leg with your other hand. And what we'll do is, we're not letting the hip or the anominate move, we're going to engage the restrictive barrier by extending the hip, stretching the tight psoas. And I'm gonna have Carrie, I want you to push your knee forward for me, Carrie. One, two, three, four, five. Let it rest and relax. And then I'm gonna engage the next barrier by extending the hip some more. And now press your knee forward again. One, two, three, four, five. Let it rest and relax. And then I'm gonna engage the next barrier again. Press forward, one, two, three, four, five. Let it rest and relax. And finally, take it back. And then just reassess the overall motion of the psoas, which is a hip flexor. And that video was compliments of Dr. Heinke and one of my uh, instructors back in medical school back in the day. All right, so moving on to the next part of the presentation um, regarding natural childbirth. So 
people have different definitions of what natural childbirth is. It could mean vaginal birth. It could mean uh, vaginal birth with no intervention whatsoever or somewhere in between. Um, there are many different programs available. Lamaze has been around for a very long time or different breathing techniques. Um, Bradley Method is another popular um, program and hypnobirthing. So this is just a very quick overview of what Lamaze and Bradley are. Um, Lamaze is a good program. Like I said, it's been around a really long time. Um, Bradley, I have a lot of patients who do utilize Bradley. It's a longer course. Um, it is comprehensive. Um, it has a different philosophy than hypnobirthing for sure. So that's where I wanna focus uh, most of our attention because I have seen patients go through the different programs. And like I said, um, Bradley can be very successful, um, but I would say with hypnobirthing, specifically hypnobabies, I um, have been very happy with the outcomes, which is why I chose to use that program myself. Um, so there are different um, sub-programs under hypnobirthing, but hypnobabies uh, is a six-week program that you can find local instructors like Carrie. And um, it is a comprehensive program um, going over childbirth education. Um, what I like about it too is it incorporates a partner or without a partner versus some of the other programs. It really is coach-focused, partner-focused. So I've had some single moms uh, utilize hypnobabies and be very successful because you can really be in your own zone and you aren't dependent on someone else because it really is a process where you have to listen to your own body and no one outside of you can tell you exactly what's going on. So I'll let Carrie go over this next portion. So what is hypnosis? Um, well, it begins with a state of extremely focused concentration where the mind and body relax together to create a link to our inner minds, also known as the subconscious. Uh, the state is de uh, deepened with hypnotic techniques. And so the suggestions um, um, that are given while in this state retrain the inner mind to achieve a goal. So in this case, it's um, to totally transform the birthing sensations to painful ones, to um, uh, pressure and tightening. Um, for many moms, it's manageable. For other moms, it's a pain-free experience. Uh, with repetition, um, th that compounds the effects of hypnosis. Um, we experience the positive effects in our minds and our bodies because our minds control our bodies completely. So like with anything, um, any goal related to hypnosis, you always want to uh, strengthen it um, with self-hypnosis, and that is called the hypnotic law of compounding. So your subconscious mind is like an internal computer. Um, everything that you've ever seen, read, um, absorbed on any level from the time you were a baby um, gets filed into your subconscious mind um, and it houses all of the files um, that it, you've ever experienced. It allows us to draw from our memories um, and it creates our belief systems. Um, now, um, this actually creates your reality when it comes to retraining your mind for childbirth. The inner mind, um, it, that uh, lasting positive change, where lasting positive change takes place, um, is um, uh, done so by relaxing the mind and the body and then deepening the state to make those changes. So essentially, we're creating a new neural pathway in your brain, a new belief system about childbirth. And the more you practice it, the easier it gets. So our moms, hip, our hypnomoms, listen to hypnobabies hypnosis suggestions every single day um, because they really want to help um, their, their minds transform those sensations um, into uh, uh, pressure and tightening, things that they can feel um, comfortable with while they're giving birth, comfortable, confident. Um, and this helps them perceive childbirth as easy and comfortable. Um, the retraining works is the same way as upgrading a software program on your computer. So we have a certain belief system that we come into childbirth with, and then through the process of retraining it, we uh, enhance that belief system or in many ways change it because um, not all people come into childbirth experience with a positive belief system around it. Uh, the old programs um, 
which are conscious and subconscious beliefs about childbirth, um, again, get upgraded to newer ones that allow each expectant and birthing mother to experience pregnancy and childbirth in a much easier way. So we um, transform um, not just the way we experience the sensations, but eliminating fear, which eliminates in many ways the fear, tension, pain response. So we're not fighting the pressure wave, we're flowing with the wave. So each time a hypnobaby's mom practices her hypnotic techniques, she automatically becomes more deeply primed um, uh, with hypnobaby's hypnosis cues. So we have very specific cues that we give our moms to enter hypnosis at a very deep level called somnambulism, which is uh, the deepest level of hypnosis just before sleep. Um, it, we teach our moms medical grade hypnosis, um, and that again allows them to really transform those sensations. So uh, they are experiencing the sensations very comfortably. Um, the, technique, uh, the hypnosis suggestions, techniques, and mental cues um, during their birthing time um, have been integrated into the subconscious through the practice of repetition. Um, and then through each pressure wave, they are instantly available. During childbirth, um, some women listen to their hypnobabies' tracks, um, as we talked about. Um, typically, um, I, in my experience as a hypnodoula, most moms listen to tracks either with their earbuds or out loud in the room. Um, this is especially so for our, uh, the single moms, um, but um, there are occasions where um, just through birth partners, whether a doula or um, a husband or an additional birth partner, we'll be giving them post-hypnotic suggestions for what is called hypnoanesthesia through the process um, of hypnobaby's childbirth hypnosis. Um, um, and these, again, are the post-hypnotic suggestions that help them um, manifest the hypnoanesthesia in their body and transform those sensations. So hypnobabies is very easy to learn, practice, and use uh, with a little bit of education and guidance. And um, as with any new program, it's most effective when the instruction is um, in our written materials are followed. So you want to always do the program as it's designed for your best benefit. Um, we can't program or upgrade our own computers without guidance from experts, and the same is true for hypno childbirth hypnosis. Yeah, I would say it definitely does have daily homework. Um, so I've had some moms inquire, is this a better program for first time moms, for second, third babies? Anyone can do the program. Mm -hmm. I would say time wise, um, it may be easier for a first time mom, but um, definitely I did it with my third. So sometimes it is a little more challenging to find the time to do the homework when you have toddlers, um, but it can be accomplished for anyone. Absolutely. So one of the main benefits um, and unique features of hypnobabies is that we teach our moms eyes open childbirth hypnosis. Um, and what is that? Well, it means that our moms can walk and talk and move around during their birthing time while maintaining that deep level of somnambulistic hypnosis where she can still utilize the hypnoanesthesia from the top of her breast to the middle of her thighs. Um, allowing her to even um, have a very comfortable um, birthing experience um, while moving around and not having to stay still and really focus and concentrate. Well, concentration is um, important during pressure waves and you really wanna be utilizing the power of your mind to control what's happening in your body. Um, uh, you don't need to be completely still in order to best utilize it. Um, now, when our moms are able to be upright, um, the technique allows for much better descent and positioning of the baby without sacrificing the comfort. Um, I always tell my students there's three things that make childbirth um, easier and more comfortable, and that's body, um, where, you know, is your body balanced, where is your baby in relation to your, um, into your pelvis, and then um, your mind and emotions. And so we always want to be um, honoring the physiological aspect of childbirth while at the same time using the mind to control what's happening um, w regarding the way we're, we're uh, experiencing the sensations of it. Um, so our hypnomoms are much more able to, um, again, uh, walk, talk, move around, use the birthing ball, sit in a rocking chair, um, be in the shower, um, or any other position, again, that aids in baby's progress. Um, so hypnobabies um, is profoundly deep relaxation. Um, all the muscles of the birthing woman's body, especially the ones around her baby, must be totally relaxed um, so that they can work efficiently without any added discomfort of the fear, tension, pain responses I mentioned earlier. 
Um, anytime a woman is afraid of what's happening to her and she's starting to fight the, the pressure, she's actually tensing the muscles that are um, trying to help move her baby down. Um, so with our um, level of hypnosis that we teach our mother, our moms, so she's able to really just sink in and surrender to the process um, very confidently and very comfortably. Um, so hypnotic relaxation um, practice is essential and again must be taken seriously. So throughout the hyp uh, hypnosis, our moms become completely limp and loose um, like a dish rag. Again, instead of tensing up and fighting it, they relax right into it. Um, and we do progressive relaxations, uh, inductions in all of our HypnoBaby scripts while she's training, um, as well as all of the audio tracks, the cues, and the techniques. Um, deep hypnotic relaxation is practiced so that mom um, can become completely um, relaxed as an automatic response when she's having her waves. Um, and so it is the hypnosis that creates the deep relaxation. Um, so it's very important that our moms um, continue to choose to use the hypnosis throughout the process so that she can maintain that deep, deep level of comfort. Okay, so um, here's a couple of videos, very personal. This is actually from when I was in the birthing process with my third child. Um, I only have a couple of clips because after the second one, things actually went very quickly, um, which was excellent. And I, by far that was my favorite birth. So you'll see a couple little segments here of me uh, utilizing the earbuds on the, on the birthing ball. And then also you'll kind of see how I'm able to still talk to my husband and smile. All right, cubby. Here's mommy in her room waiting to meet you. She's currently at five centimeters and 90% effaced. All right, little guy, we're excited to meet you soon. It's peace time. Yeah, right now it's time for peace. And then here's the next one. All right, there's mommy. Mommy just got checked. We are now what are we? seven centimeters and 95% <laughs> effaced and station of one. So we're moving along. You're rock star. <laughs> Too much longer. Okay. See you soon. There, I'm getting a little more focused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so I loved this quote when I was just looking through some things. Why natural childbirth? Confident women who are supported and encouraged and who enjoy the freedom to tap into their own wisdom find deep satisfaction in giving birth naturally. I have yet to find a mom who uh, really regrets doing one of these programs. Um, even for moms who maybe uh, the outcome was a little bit different from what they anticipated, they were still really happy to have the tools to fall back on. You know, I've had moms who ended up having a cesarean because their babies breached, but they were still really happy to have these techniques to be able to be relaxed during surgery. Um, and moms who, you know, maybe uh, they had a really rapid labor and um, it was quicker than what they anticipated, but still, like I said, really, really happy. Um, so, and the other side of this here is from the same uh, nurse. The most compelling reason to choose natural childbirth is a universal one. We know how to give birth without machines, epidurals, and fear. So when people ask why natural childbirth, a more important question might be, why not? So as I mentioned, breach is one reason why some women will have a cesarean, um, but definitely, um, most women can give birth uh, without having to need a cesarean. So there are some references there. Um, and then, of course, 
Thank you to Carrie and Hypno Babies. Thank you very much to my husband for doing lots of video editing for me. Thank you for Hogue Hospital Irvine. I definitely encourage all of you to check out the amazing fudge birthing suites. Um, they're gorgeous, huge, um, and have all these resources that we discussed. Um, you know, the birth tubs, uh, sorry, bathtubs where you can labor, um, beautiful walking garden you can go out in. Um, um, and just wonderful support staff there. Thank you to Liz and all the team here, Orange Coast Women's Medical Group, and to everybody who's watching. Um, and then here are some really great websites to check out um, for more information. And then we have some questions to go, go into here. So thank you to everyone who's sending us some questions. So I'll just read the question and then if you wanna help answer any of these. So is an instructor required or is there literature in tandem with a course that can be followed? Absolutely, there's a home study course that is um, the same exact um, hypnosis techniques. It's just designed a little differently to be done as a self-study versus being um, instructed um, uh, through live through an instructor. Obviously, we're doing um, all of our instruction right now via Zoom, um, but we have traditionally done it in person. Um, so you get a little bit more out of an in-person um, course, but if um, your only option is doing it solo, then uh, the home study is a great second choice. If general meditation is a challenge for mom, would hypnobabies or hypnosis not be a great option? I'd like to understand how to decide what labor and delivery plan works best for me. So I think that's a great question. Mm -hmm. I was very, very skeptical. However, um, as, a, as a resident, I was amazed how different cultures experience the birth process differently, um, particularly in the Hmong culture when any woman from that group of people would come in, she was super calm, she'd be eight to 10 centimeters dilated, come in, have her baby, make no sound, and then just recover very easily. Um, so I knew there had to be something to it, definitely something cultural. In our country, we are trained from very young. Mm -hmm. Childbirth is horrible. It's the worst pain you're ever gonna experience. Um, it's something to endure. Uh, but this program is amazing to help you reprogram all of that in your mind and realize it's not something that has to be horrible. It's not, it, it should be something wonderful, right? You're right. bringing a new life into this world. Um, and it's, it is a really wonderful program for relaxation. Um, the Joyful Affirmations track, I would listen to every day with my daughter and she loved it. And even now, sometimes when she's feeling anxious, she acts, has to listen to that, um, which is great. And that shows you the really profound effect that it can have on people, even if you think, oh, it's hypnosis and you have these ideas about it. I really think it can work for anyone mm -hmm. if you put the work into it. It is work to reprogram yeah. your mind though. Yeah, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Um, so whether you're doing the self-study or listening to any hypnosis um, for any reason, um, you have to want it. Um, and you have to allow your subconscious mind to, to be reprogrammed. Uh, so uh, the hypnosis is um, essentially meditation with a goal. So when you're reprogramming your brain, you're doing so with the idea of success in mind. So anybody that wants to have a natural birth um, and is desiring a different type of experience um, than one that we've been culturally conditioned to experience. Um, in many ways, some of us have also had, um, were brought into this world. Um, and so we have to get over our own birth experiences to be able to transform transform into um, something new for our baby's birth. Um, but it is a, it is, um, a subconscious belief uh, that, it, that has been reinforced for many of us over the course of our lifetimes. And so um, this, this program can work as long as you want it to work. I think this is a good question for you. What suggestions do you have for moms that are not able to complete a hypnobirthing course? I'm due in five weeks. Oh, yes. So um, Hypnobabies is a six-week course, obviously. Um, and the, the process of hypnosis is subconscious. And so repetition compounds the effects. While we, um, the course itself is designed for six weeks, um, for moms that do the home study course, um, Hypnobabies has, um, who, who come into the process 
process a little late, obviously, as this, um, as this mom has. Um, they have um, designed a, um, a schedule for uh, sh shortening it a little bit um, so that you can uh, maximize your benefits from it. It's not ideal, but again, not all moms learn about it in quote unquote in time. Um, but the ultimate idea is repetition compounds the effects. So as long as you do it, do it, do it, do it, um, your subconscious will be re reprogrammed. Um, what is the difference between hypnobirthing and the Bradley method? I'm currently enrolled in Bradley method classes, but also interested in hypnobirthing. Well, I would say they're two very different philosophies. Mm -hmm. um, women with, I would say this is kind of a generalization, but with hypnobirthing, the idea is kind of more like, uh, bite the bullet and have your baby, um, kind of, you know, that yes, you can do it kind of the same, we're built for this, you can do it, but um, changing the language and changing your mindset is not a part of Bradley. So it is very much still using our culture where childbirth is painful, it's going to hurt, you're gonna have to deal with it, kind of those, how to coach uh, through the pain versus hypnobirthing and hypnobabies is really saying, this doesn't have to be painful. And if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would uh, have a hard time believing it. But it is very much true that um, the birthing process does not have to be painful. Uh, many, many women come in already, like I said, well advanced uh, in their cervical dilation, and they're still smiling and talking and making jokes. Um, so. I would say the fear clearing is really a big part of hypnobirthing versus that's not really addressed with uh, Bradley method. Should I have postnatal osteopathic treatment after the birth of my baby? I would say yes. Um, at, at a minimum, consider pelvic floor physical therapy, but osteopathic uh, care can be amazing. Um, I actually, taught my husband to do some techniques to adjust my sacrum for me multiple times postpartum, and it was a lifesaver. I really was hobbling around, I could not walk, um, but doing those adjustments um, made a huge difference. And there are some great providers out there for sure that we can always refer you to, or you know, if we book an appointment specifically for that, that's something that can be addressed as well. But yes, definitely that's something you can look into. It's also can be really helpful for babies with colic. There are different um, techniques that can be utilized to help calm babies who aren't sleeping well or have feeding issues. If I am a high-risk patient, can I still receive osteopathic treatment? Absolutely. So like I said, MDs and DOs can provide the same level of care. Um, there are many DOs who are maternal fetal medicine specialists. Many of my friends are. Um, at my residency program, we had uh, a maternal fetal medicine fellowship. So um, absolutely, you can see a DO for a high-risk pregnancy. Um, and in our office, we frequently work with maternal fetal medicine specialists. You'll see one of us as well as having them in consultation. Um, and then we would be the ones to provide your care at the time of birth. You've spoken a lot about homework required for hypnobabies. What would an estimated daily time allocation look like? And is the process all or nothing? Do you want to address that? Yeah, that's that? a great question. And <laughs> now um, we actually call it home play instead of homework because it's really fun to study with hypnobabies. Um, Dr. Peters mentioned we do change a lot of the language um, uh, around childbirth in our course to help on a conscious level really start to um, perceive childbirth in a very positive way. This includes the, uh, the doing the, the program. Um, about an hour a day um, is essentially what you're looking at um, for hypnosis. Um, there are birthing uh, pregnancy affirmations um, that we recommend listening to perhaps when you go to sleep at night. You can in fact um, listen to any of your hypnosis as you go to sleep at night, your subconscious absolutely hears everything on the script, even if you don't consciously remember. 
Um, but in addition to the, um, doing a daily hypnosis track and practicing the finger drop technique, which is the cornerstone of the Hypno Babies program, you're looking at about an hour a day um, and then adding in the birthing, uh, pregnancy affirmations um, as often as you like. I used to listen to those um, every time I got in and out of the car. And so um, I may not have gotten through one whole track in a day, but um, it was just enough for me to keep my mind focused on a very conscious way on a very positive pregnancy. Yeah, and I would say listening to the tracks when you're um, getting ready for bed is amazing. If you have any insomnia during pregnancy, yeah. it's super, super helpful. And, uh, you know, that's one concern some people have as they say, I fall asleep every time I listen to my track. It's fine. It doesn't matter. That mm -hmm. happened to me all the time. And I still use them sometimes postpartum to help go to sleep. Yes. But <laughs> um, uh, it is really, really effective even if you fall asleep. Um, hypnobirthy, uh, hypnobirthing and Bradley birth classes are so expensive. What do you recommend for a first time mom who doesn't have the budget for a full class? I would say the home study course. It's a fraction of the um, cost of a live class, which you are um, um, not getting the live instruction and therefore some of the wisdom from your instructor that way. But um, if budget's a concern for you, then uh, the home study course would be a good option. Um, there is, a, 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 from a previous slide, there is another uh, hypnobirthing program, and you can see a couple websites down. There's a uh, hypnobirthing.com. Um, they do have a book with a CD attached, so you can do some um, self-study through that program as well. Um, but I do think the structure of the Hypno Babies program is excellent. It, it makes it super easy. You just see, okay, this is what I listen to this day and the next day, and you don't have to, um, you don't have to try to figure out your own schedule uh, for programming on your own. What techniques or courses or training can I use if I'm already 38 weeks pregnant? 38 weeks is a little bit late in the game, but you know, I would say you can still definitely um, practice some of the hypnosis for fear clearing. Um, you might be surprised if you just have the confidence in yourself and know, hey, you know what, my mom or my grandma and everyone before that did this without an epidural, um, then you know you can do it too. You really, it's such a mind game. Uh, when I told one of my brothers I was doing hypno babies uh, and I explained it to him, I thought he would laugh, but he said, you know what, that makes sense because he said, I don't want to equate it to um, torture, <laughs> but he said, you know, the military is trained to endure other events and not give up secrets or do things. So he said, that makes sense. Your mind is incredibly powerful. So even in a very short period of time, I think that if you have the confidence in yourself and you understand your body's built for this and you can do it, you'll be fine. Um, as uh, would it be ineffective to only complete portions of the Hypno Babies course? Um, I, you know, it's best when you do the whole program, but you can still get benefit from doing what you can from it for sure. Um, and then during hypnobirthing labor, do you still feel pain? I would say uh, the labor process, most people don't feel pain. Honestly, I'm not exaggerating at all. Um, what people describe as the ring of fire at the very end with crowning, maybe that's not completely eliminated, but um, it really does depend on the person. I've had some women who go through the entire experience and they are totally fine. Um, some other people do maybe at that very last moment, which only lasts seconds, um, it may be incredibly intense, but you know, that's a very bl short blink of the eye. Yeah, I, Hypno Babies prepares you throughout pregnancy for a very empowering experience. Um, the profound relaxation 
during the hypnosis sessions as you're training really affords your body to relax deeply and all of the wonderful physiological benefits of that daily deep relaxation leads up to the birthing experience that you then just easily flow with. Uh, so there's really no resistance. There's just empowered um, surrender as letting your body do what it was designed to do. So the, uh, the process of pain um, that most women experience in childbirth, particularly the suffering, um, they experience it because we're conditioned to expect it. And when we're not expecting it, and instead we're expecting a very positive, empowering, and even comfortable and easy one, then that's what they can't have. Uh, though for those moms who say they, they experienced not a pain-free birth, most of them will say there was some discomfort, um, but it was definitely manageable. Yes. All right, so I think that's all of the questions. Um, so thank you to everyone. Have thank a great so night. Much.